Uh, I think Dr. Santos sir has made it very easier for me. So because he has covered uh, the uh, approach of the media stenum via the endoscopic approach. So I'll be discussing uh, the topic that is USB FNA, which is an added extension of the EBUS. That is, it is a procedure done by the pulmonologist with the pulmonologist scope via the esophagus. So I'll be going through this topic in these headings. So media medical media stenoscopy is a new term coined, which is uh, the procedure done to access the complete media stenum via the endoscopic approach that is both by the EBUS TB NA along with US FNA or USB FNA. So USB FNA was first described in the year 2007. This is again a very interesting article published by Mr. Pattabhiraban and Dr. Arjun Srinivasan is also part of it. So this was published in the year uh, 2015 in the Lung India, which has highlighted on the pulmonologist perspective of doing this procedure. Also addressed the various concerns and the advantages and indications of doing this procedure, which I'll be summarizing in the next slide. So if we want to approach from the endoscopic side, so should we be referring it to our gastroenterology colleagues uh, wherein Sir has enumerated all the advantages of doing it with the US scope or are we justified in doing it with the pulmonology scope. So I wouldn't be going in detail with the advantages of that what the US scope has because Sir has already covered it. Uh, so if we are doing it with all, the, all these added advantages of the endoscope, how are we justified to? So if we do a USB FNA, we are accessing the complete media stenum both from the respiratory side and also from the esophageal side with the same scope. And what we're doing here is we are accessing the same mediastinal structures at a different angle also. So the yield becomes higher when, used, when, you, when a combined approach is used. And also since we are doing it in the same session by the same operator with the same scope, it overall reduces the cost, time and inconvenience both to the operator and also the patient. Overall, USB procedure, USB procedure per se requires lesser anesthesia. It is easier, safe, and also requires a shorter lung learning curve because we are viewing the same media stenal structures but from the esophageal side. Coming to the indications and advantages, it is used in staging and diagnosis of the lung cancer and provides a complete access to the mediastinum, including the thick and mediastinal pleura. And sometimes we'll be able to access the adrenal lesions also, mostly the left adrenal. Uh, overall, the yield on an average has shown to be 10% uh, higher when the procedure is combined. And like uh, addressed in the previous talk, we can access all the inaccessible stations which are not uh, assessed by the EBUS TBNA, station 3P, 5, 8, and 9, and also sometimes the difficult lymph nodes like the small station 4L. Very useful in hypoxemic patients, critically ill patients, and patients with an airway, especially the tube patients where you may not access all the lymph nodes via the EBUS procedure, and sometimes maybe the only modality also to access. Uh, helpful in intolerant patients, especially due to cough or dyspnea, because uh, putting a scope again in the airway would only lead to worsening of this underlying condition. Helpful in pediatric patients, especially in children. Studies have shown that in children lesser than 10 years of age, wherein the tracheal diameter is less than 9 mm, EUS scope may not enter, uh, and EBUS, USB FNA may be the only modality then. Do not hesitate to go for a USB FNA whenever you have a dry EBUS TBNA aspirate. And patients with restricted mouth opening where you, can, where you cannot enter via the oral route and have to use the nasal route, USB FNA may be the only modality. So there's a picture showing uh, all the uh, media stenal lesions which can be accessed, accessed either via the EBUS route or the US route. And by both the routes, if you see the red ones are the nodes station 10, 11, and 12, which can be assessed only by the EBUS TBNA, whereas the striped ones are the ones which can be accessed by the US FNA or the USB FNA, and the black ones are the ones which can be assessed uh, by the combined approach. The slide I would like to skip in the interest of time as it had been already covered, and also Sir has made it easier uh, with respect to the US landmarks also. But only thing what we have to remember here is, uh, unlike the uh, respiratory route or the trachea or the bronchi where we have anatomical landmarks and the endoscopic vision is good, it is not so with the USB uh, procedure because uh, 
uh, there's no anatomical landmarks with the esophagus, so you have to be very uh, uh, well acquainted with the vascular landmarks and the ultrasound, uh, ultrasound image for the navigation. Uh, this is the uh, image of the left adrenal, which resembles a seagull, thick and mediastinal pleura. Coming to the tip and tips and tricks, uh, intubation is very easier. If I think most of us, if you recollect, during our uh, uh, initial training period when we were performing the bronchoscopies, instead of entering the trachea, we mostly used to enter the esophagus. So there are two ways of uh, doing an intubation. One is the blind one. Once the transducer tip is at the posterior pharyngeal space, you ask the patient to swallow if the patient is under conscious sedation and advance the scope gently and the scope gets carried away with the peristaltic wave. If not, just uh, place it at the posterior uh, pharyngeal space, then gently slide it under the uh, posterior to the arytenoids and advance with gentle pressure. Make sure you're always advancing only with gentle pressure and be cautious and ask the patient if he has any dysphagia or any underlying structural esophageal abnormalities as the endoscopic vision is poor. And always better to pre-measure and prefix the needle hub uh, to avoid damage to the scope and get a precise needle entry. Do not over anti-flex the scope to get a better apposition as it leads to a parallel entry since we don't have any needle elevator also. Uh, make sure you define a reference point to identify the structures whenever you lose your way. And during the initial training period, you, uh, you can see that left atrium is the most easily accessible structure. And do not put the, your EBUS scope again into the trachea once you are done with the procedure. And make sure if you have to put it at any cost, you decontaminate the scope before you put it inside again. And always inform your pathologist about the route you are, uh, through which you are approaching the station because sometimes they may get confused if they see squamous cells. And transvascular approach, be very choosy in picking where you have to do this approach. Coming to the limitations, poor endoscopic vision, there's only ultrasound guidance for the navigation, and also there is poor apposition due to the smaller size of the scope. And most importantly, there is limited availability of the training programs or the trained and accredited pulmonologists who can perform this safely and confidently. Luckily for us, uh, initially, we were also referring it to our gastroenterology colleagues since the load of gastroenterology cases at our institute is higher. We went there and they were very helpful in making us learn. And now, now we are only doing it. So combined approach is always helpful and staging and diagnosis of the lung cancer. Also, the recommendations uh, uh, recommend it, uh, whenever, it is available, whenever the rose is not available. This is a forest plot diagram uh, published by Wilman P. et al. in the endoscope in 2015, which has shown that the, combined, uh, the yield has increased by 13% when a combined approach was used over EBUS TVNA and by 21% over EUS FNA. These are various other studies. I wouldn't be going in detail because Sir has already covered. So overall, uh, the gist is uh, USB FNA is safer and efficacious and also proven to be safer in children. Overall, per se, the procedure requires lesser duration, patient and operator comfort is higher, and also the complication rate is lesser. There's another added extension uh, and a, a retrospective study published in the year 2019 where it has showed that USB FNA can be helpful in diagnosing liver and celiac metastasis, the retroperitoneal nodes. And there's an interesting article uh, wherein the bronchoscopists were given a training program and seen the learning curve that is required. It has shown that all the experienced bronchoscopists who could achieve a supervised assist score of equal or more than 50 or uh, when performed equal to or more than three cases could be competent enough to perform a USB FNA independently. Uh, I would like to discuss two case, case scenarios, if time permits. So these two cases were performed at our institute. The first case is a case of uh, recurrent left carcinoma of the buccal mucosa with a clinical staging of T4. Biopsy has proven to be squamous cell carcinoma. FDG uh, PET showed FDG avoid a paraesophageal node referred to us for further staging. So on evaluation, patient had limited clean mouth opening due to surgery and also the radiation. So we couldn't approach via the oral route. So we had to go via the nasal route and USB FNA was the only modality. 
So uh, the report was found to be metastatic deposit of squamous cell carcinoma. The other case, second case, a uh, patient presented with a uh, cough, SOB, V's, fever, and hypoxemia with an underlying background history of uh, obstructive airway disease. So since the patient was hypoxemic, as you can see on the C CT, there is a right nodal lymph nodal mass. We went ahead with EUSB FNA procedure. So if you see, this is the station 4R, which is inhomogeneous and necrotic. Station 7, identified with the vascular landmarks, left atrium and the pulmonary artery. Uh, the diagnosis was TB in this case. So this video I'll like to skip in the interest of time, since Sir has already shown. To conclude, EUSB FNA is a very safe and effective procedure and always complements when, when used in a combined approach. And what we need is a, probably in the future need of a hybrid scope which can combine the capabilities and length of the EUS scope along with the size of the EBUS scope. So most importantly, the need of the R is the training program uh, to ease in the transition to uh, uh, do a combined EBUS, EUSB, TBNA approach and to, uh, and to incorporate this training practice, training experience in the real world practice. Thank you.